Hello, it's Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, and I'm here again uh, this Memorial Weekend. I wasn't going to post any more. I thought I had <laughs> pretty much said everything. And then I saw on Twitter that the Reading Women podcast have announced that they are doing a celebration in the month of June. And uh, in that month, they're going to have a bunch of giveaways and, and fun things uh, that go along with uh, a contest that they're doing to read women in the month of June. I'm so here for this. I'm so here for this. And uh, you'll see that this is kind of my jam. And because I have so many recommendations today, so many things that I think uh, that, that even my choices are overflowing, but I'd like to also make some recommendations of some things to people. So uh, let me start off with a little thank you to Kendra and Autumn of, of the Reading Women uh, podcast. So I used to read kind of whatever as things were released or whatever I would pick up or hear about, but it wasn't purposeful. It wasn't thoughtful. And then two things happened. I came across Book Riot and the Reading Women kind of at the same time. And I started doing the the uh, Book Riot Read Harder Challenge, which really prompted me to think differently about what I was choosing to read uh, and how that then opened up my opportunities to read more things. Uh, so it really was a, a door opening into all sorts of different types of books that I hadn't even considered or thought of. And I considered myself pretty well read up until that point. Uh, and then the Reading Women Challenges just helped me think about those same prompts that that book harder that read harder was was challenging me to do, but could I find them written by women? And the joy that I have now at all of the amazing books that are coming out by women, um, it really really has changed how I read. It's changed my appreciation for books. Uh, so it is, it, and it has un absolutely unlocked the numbers. I mean, I am reading at such a, a bigger rate uh, of, of completion just because I'm engaged and I'm, and I'm hungry for it. So thank you, Kendra and Autumn. Um, just one person that you've, you've completely touched and changed. And I know I'm not the only one. So I'm so thrilled to, to celebrate your, your success and everything that you've done. So I wanted to, to do a small little part in, uh, talking through my approach to this with some with things that I'm going to read as well as some recommendations. <clears throat> so with that said, I'm hoping this is not going to be super long. Uh, I've already done this like three times just to kind of tight, tighten it up. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump through. So the bing, they've created a bingo card and this bingo card has many different ways to uh, to win prizes and, and all of that. And I think the prompts are wonderful. Uh, so I'm going to kind of walk us through three different ways that I may approach this. Uh, so I'm <laughs> saying this because I, I hate TBRs. I mean, I love them in theory uh, and I wish I was that person, but I'm not. I'm the person who is a mood reader and I'm going to pick up whatever I want at that moment. So I kind of bucket things and put things together like, oh, I might want to, here's a pile of things that I could want to read. So these are my piles. I could I may pick one of these three. I could go off the radar and tr do something completely different, but I think I've got a really great, great um, selection. And I'm also using this as an opportunity to read from my own backlist and read from my own library. So that's a really great thing because I need to start moving through some of my, some of my uh, personal books that I own. So with that said, let's jump to it. So the first combination will be uh, the first column. Uh, so this will this list will get you through that. And so that will be uh, five books. One is Aussie author. The second is short stories. The third are summer reads. Fourth, a road trip. And then fifth is um, a young adult novel by a woman of color. Again, all women authors. So get ready. Aussie authors. Um, so the beauty of what Six Minutes, Jacqueline at Six Minutes for Me and Doris from All Day Books did was they unlocked uh, Australian authors to me. And of course, I gravitate to women authors now. Thanks, reading women. Uh, so let me, I have a few here, uh, some that I'm reading now and then some that I recommend. So I, one of the things that I've had in my backlist forever is a book called 
uh, The Strays by Emily Bitto. I've really wanted to read this for a long time. It's been sitting there uh, in my Kindle for ages. It might be time to unlock this one and get it moving. Another option that I'm interested in is a book by Helen Garner. And this I found on my Scribd account after I started plugging in some Australian authors, this one came up and I bookmarked it because I thought it looked really interesting. And it's a story of an older, uh, of a woman who's taking care of her mother as her mother is dying. And it sounded really tender and poignant. So it sounds like a, a book that I might be interested in, in reading. And then another one um, is, I haven't gotten to this. This is one of my book of the month choices that I haven't read yet. Um, this could be used also for mysteries. And this is Sarah Bailey, The Dark Lake. Uh, I haven't read this yet. It, it got pretty good reviews. It's kind of like a thriller type mystery book. Um, so that could be an option for me as well. Or if you are a book of the month member, this is not a sponsored post, I wish, but it's not. Um, so those are three possibilities. Let me give you two recommendations that I think are phenomenal and I wish I could reread them. Uh, well, I guess I could, but I don't really have a lot of time. So the first one is Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow. Uh, this is by Jessica Townsend and this was a delight. If you are having Harry Potter feels, like you're just missing that kind of um, young adventure, magical, um, environment and, and um, kind of the hero's journey uh, with a young female character, this is your book. Written by an Australian writer, uh, so it fits the, the category here. Uh, the second one, I, I my new favorite author, Jane Harper. So I would be remiss if I didn't uh, shout from the rooftops that Jane Harper is amazing. Uh, I would recommend picking up her brand new book, which is a standalone, it's The Lost Man really great. And if you haven't tried her and you can't find The Lost Man, The Dry is another great one to start. The Dry is uh, the first of a series, whereas The Lost Man is a standalone. Both are excellent, very atmospheric, great pace, great plot, and good characters. So that's Jane Harper. Then for short stories, uh, I have a, I have this book, The Redemption of Galen Pike. These are short stories by Carrie's Davies. I've heard this is fantastic. This is a nice little slim volume. Uh, she just wrote West and West just got a ton of, of really amazing press and a lot of buzz and I thought it was fantastic. And so I'd like to go back and read this. This is only 156 pages. So this would be a great thing to knock out your, knock off the list. And then I'm also reading uh, Florida by Lauren Groff. So I'm reading that for my book club. Uh, so we're, that might be something that, um, uh, that I, well, I'm definitely going to read that. So it'll, we'll have to see if I can add this one in as well. And then as a recommendation, uh, I love this book. I'm not a big short story fan. I'm new to the genre, new to the genre. You can go back and see one of my very first, uh, blogs I ever did was about my problems with short stories and how, uh, the Faber, newest Faber series came out of the UK has really helped me understand a little bit more and, and understand things that I, I'm interested in when it comes to short stories. But this was an early love of mine, and this is The Interpreter of Maladies by Jupa Lahiri. This is just lush and beautiful, evocative, a beautiful writing, um, very poignant stories of, uh, of Indian experiences throughout the, throughout the world. Summer reads is the next category. So here's how I think about summer reads. I either want to have something really long and epic because you have a little bit of more time and space. The sun is out later. You, you just want to enjoy those languid moments a little bit more. And so sometimes you want something that's going to la last a little longer that you can kind of just uh, sink into. Or I want something kind of light and that I don't have to put a lot of, of mental capacity to because it's hot and, and you, you, you don't really have the concentration. So that's, those are the kind of things that I, I think about. Um, so my options here, um, so, oh, I forgot to bring it. Um, I have normal people somewhere here. I'll show it, show it here. Uh, normal people that I'm reading. Um, so I'll finish it in June so I could count this one in. Um, I, it's not that it's 
it's literary uh, and, and it's one of those that is getting a lot of rewards. Uh, but it is lighter in tone, like it, it's not a, a super deep read. There's not a lot of a lot of intense brain power behind it, or that you need to in, need to put into it to to enjoy it. Uh, so this one was on. I think it's still on digital ebook sale in the United States. Um, so today is Memorial Day, Monday, the twenty is it twenty seventh? The twenty seventh. Uh, and so this one is the Pri Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon a fantasy book with women and girls centered and it's their hero's journey and dragons and all of that stuff. And it's been a while since I've read a fantasy book. So I thought that might be a good one uh, to read and it's getting a lot of, a lot of good reviews. So I have on the lines of like big, thick books, I have Melmoth by Sarah Perry that I haven't had a chance to read yet. Uh, this is nice, a, a nice long, big one. And this my understanding is this is a retelling of the Beowulf uh, story. Uh, I really like the Essence, Essence Essex Serpent, and this is her second book. So it's got mixed reviews, but it's a it's kind of a bigger tome. So <clears throat> I figure I might jump into that. Really big tome, uh, N.K. Jemisin. I have yet to start this trilogy, uh, and this is the fifth season. This is the first of. Of her of her trilogy, and this she you know she's the very first woman who wrote who won three Hugo Awards back to back, and she's a woman of color. So yay, N.K. Jemisin! Uh, I think I might might actually jump into this, and then I have one other one that kind of is a little different. Um, so this is How to Do Nothing: Resisting the Attention Economy by Jenny O'Dell. Uh, the reason I'm thinking about this is because you do, even though I said whimsical and not and not not heavy, uh, I think there is something about going about being a little bit more quiet and more thoughtful and slowing down. And so, with the heat of summer, I'm thinking that this might be a a, a good read. So those are all on my potential list. Uh, I will also make make two recommendations. Uh, the first one is The Stranger Diaries by Ellie Griffiths. Uh, so she has written the Ruth Galloway series, which I enjoyed tr tremendously. This is a standalone, and I thought it was really well done. Uh, very, very compelling, and one of those books you can just jump into and, and just enjoy. Uh, the other one will be the audio version of Daisy Jones and the Six. And this is by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now, if you have not heard of this book already, it's kind of like the darling of the spring uh, the, it's, I think the book would be fine, but, uh, the audio book is a plus fantastic great ca cast of characters. It's, it's the, re think of it as, um, behind the music telling of a fictional band, uh, from the seventies. And it's just really, really great narration. Uh, and I, I, it's super fun. So that would be a great summer, summer audio book for someone. Okay. Next one is Road Trip. So I'm deviating a little bit from this. When I think of road trip, I think the idea of, of escaping and trying something new and and just kind of getting away from everything and, and the adventure portion. And so from that, I would, I'm thinking about uh, reading, so there, I have two by Rebecca Solnit. So I'm a, just a devotee of Rebecca Solnit. Uh, I think she's brilliant. I think she's so interesting. These are two books about about uh, feminism and being and being a woman in the world and having adventures and 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 the like. The first one is a field guide to getting lost, and then the second one is wanderlust. And both of the and this is a history of walking. So yeah, it's not a road trip, but I think in the spirit of uh, escape and, and adventure, um, that's probably a good one. And it just made me think of another one. When I think of, of female adventure books, one of my favorite is uh, Rachel Kushner's book, uh, The Flamethrowers. So this is a book that also uh, has that idea of escaping an adventure and, and, and trying it on, just leaving home and, and trying your trying the world out on your own. And I highly recommend that's my favorite Rachel. Kushner book um, and that's the flamethrowers and then lastly uh, for this option is a young adult novel by a woman of color 
And, and I'm so excited. I'll get to break out my On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. So I'm excited to read this because I really enjoyed The Hate You Give that she wrote. That was her previous novel. I thought it was really a wonderful look at and unpacking of uh, the Black Lives Matter movement told by a teenager. Really great book. This sounds fantastic. So could not be happier to get a reason to read this one um, sooner than I otherwise would. So that takes us through one entire row and you would get bingo at that point. Let's go into option two from top left down to bottom right. And so we'll start off with the Aussie author. So you've already seen me mention them be before. Uh, a memoir by a woman of color. So the one that I'm excited to read, this is Always Another Country by Sisconde Musiman. And I'm very excited to, to read this. Uh, this one, was, the back cover has a blurb from Grasa Machel. And Grasa Machel was the uh, wife of Samora Machel, who was the revolutionary leader in Mozambique. And she went on to uh, be the wife of Nelson Mandela uh, up until his passing. And so she, so this is, to get a blurb from her, it seems pretty impressive. Uh, this is about a woman who was born in exile to a South African guerrilla father and a working mother. She was constantly on the move from Zambia to Kenya to Canada and beyond. I think this sounds fantastic uh, and I'm looking forward to reading this. I've had this for a while, so it's been on my list. And then from a backlist, I can't recommend this this more highly, Hunger, a memoir of my body by Roxane Gay. So Roxane Gay is very well known. Uh, she has written a lot of books. This uh, is my favorite. Uh, this is um, a really intimate portrayal of, of how uh, personal trauma that happened to her has impacted her and how she has uh, dealt with it. And a lot of it has to do with, with changes in her body. She's a very, very profound writer. A lot of trigger warnings here because she talks about uh, rape, uh, just a lot of very difficult topics, very, very straight on. So uh, very powerful book, very good book, um, also very triggering. So keep that in mind uh, if you choose that one. Okay, then free space. <sighs> Who knows what I'll do? I have so many books by women, so we'll see. Uh, that This one is very appealing to me because free space, I mean, how could you go wrong? Uh, next up, Asian authors. So I've got some fantastic book by Asian authors uh, that I want to recommend. Um, so I've got this gorgeous Penguin Classic. Uh, Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. So this this one I might actually reread. Now I'm also been trying to read, I'm gonna to try to read this. So I might start this and finish this in, in June. Uh, Human Acts by Han Kang. This has been on my um, rolling potential uh, mood reading roulette group. And then this one is so stunning. The Garden of Evening Mists by Tan Tuan Eng. This has received a ton of buzz. It was nominated for the 12, uh, 2012 Man Booker. So this could be something that I read as well. Yep, those are those. And then mystery. Okay, here's where I, I apparently I love women mystery writers because I have a ton of books here. Um, so what I think I'm gonna read is I've been meaning to read Alias Grace for a long time. This is a Margaret Atwood book. Uh, I've heard amazing things about it. Uh, I took a class about uh, on uh, mystery, the history of, of crime fiction, and the professor could not rave enough about this book. So I'm really interested in in diving into this. So this might be something that I read for the for that month. I also have this book that's getting a ton of of interest. Now this could also be for your Asian author, and this is Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. This is getting a ton of buzz. I just saw her speak at the Bay Area Book Convent and Book Festival and she was phenomenal. This sounds amazing. So this might this might bump up on the list. And now let me go through some recommendations that I have. Uh, you could not do any better than Strong Poison by Dorothy L. Sayers. 
this has one of the best female characters best and starts a four series arc of one of the best romances in books period uh, so Harriet Bain is on trial for she's an author and she wrote a book about poison and then her lover is found poisoned and everyone thinks she did it uh, Lord Lord um, Peter Whimsey uh, decides that she, no way she could possibly have done it. And so he goes to, to prove her, her case and um, interesting things ensue. Fantastic book. She's a master of the genre. Highly recommend it. There's another person that I really enjoy reading um, and mostly because I really love Paris. And so this is Cara Black. This is her, this is a prequel that she did prequel that she did way, way into the series. And so this is actually where I started it. A funny story at one of the previous um, Bay Area book festivals, uh, I had been standing there and she walks in and I and I had the book in my hand and she was running. I was either early or she was running late. I can't remember, but there was a timing aspect of it. And she was and she asked if she could look at it because it, she ha it had come straight from the publisher and she wanted to make sure that they had included a map and that the map was accurate. So I ended up getting her to sign, to sign it for me. And that was a really thrilling thing to have be standing there when she opened up the, the her first, uh, her first look at, at the new book. So that was wonderful. And these are, this is just a fun series. Um, Denise Minna, I'm a big fan of Denise Minna and Garnet Hill was one of her, I think this may have been her debut. And it, there's a character in here that suffers from mental illness. And so you have an unreliable narrator that is unreliable even to themselves. Even they are questioning uh, themselves and their, and their perspectives. Really great book. Highly recommend this. And then you can't go wrong with Kate Atkinson. So the exact same Oxford class that I took that recommended, um, well, number one, we, we, we read Strong Poison and recommended another book I had mentioned. I can't even remember which one I talked to. Oh, Alias Grace. Uh, we read this book, and this is the first Kate Atkinson uh, case history. So this is the the first of the Jackson Brody series. She's just about to come out with a new one, I think later this year. So if you haven't uh, jumped on board, this would be a great time to start with with uh, the first one, which is case histories. Okay, so there we've wrapped up two uh, two options. The very bottom row. So we're going to go across at the bottom. So we already talked about YA by a woman of color, talked about Angie Thomas for a recommendation as well as what I'm going to read. Next is beautiful cover. So this is exciting. Uh, so one book that I've been teasing about in my mood reading roulette is The Illumination of Ursula Flight. So I think I might read this one because um, it's just oh, it's so stunning. Uh, another one that's a book of the month club that I haven't had a chance to get to yet is The Far Afield by Majuri VJ. And this one also looks, looks absolutely beautiful. This is her first book. I just think that cover is just so lovely. So hence it would fit for beautiful cover. And then last, this might be one of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen. Lion Across Point. And this is, it's an English debut uh, that won a bunch of prizes in Japan. And this is by Matasugo Ono. And this was done in translation. And it's supposed to be a beautiful story of uh, a, a child and, and memory and trauma and community and uh, very touching. It's a nice thin little tome. So this could be in, in there too. Um, on feminism, okay, this is the next section that I have a ton of recommendations. Let me start first with what I think I might read. So I have been slowly reading Audrian Rich. Uh, she's a very famous feminist poet uh, and thinker. And so I'm. this might give me the impetus to, to really push this one through in, in June. Another one that I that I read, I had a chance to see her, Rebecca Traster is Good and Mad, The Revolutionary Power of Women's Anger. So this is a brand new one. And uh, she's fantastic, so smart. She pulled so much data into this book. 
uh, really fantastic. She wrote All the Single Ladies, and um, she has a great track record. All the Single Ladies I haven't read, but that would also be a great one on feminism for, for someone to read. Let me also do some recommendations. Obviously, if you have not read Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's We Should All Be Feminists, this is a beautiful little tome. I highly recommend it. Um, let's also go back to my, my um, dream BFF, Rebecca Solnit. Uh, these are fantastic, fantastic books. Uh, Men Explain Things to Me, she has been credited with the, with teasing out the word, the phrase mansplaining, and it comes from the first essay here in this book. And then uh, The Mother of All Questions, another great, uh, great further feminist essays from, from her. So men, men explain things to me was the first one. And then this is another one I love very, very much, Women in Power by Mary Beard. Uh, so I just read SPQR. This is the first thing I'd read from her and she's a phenomenal writer. Also a nice thin tome, packs a punch, a lot to discuss and think about in here. So those are the recommendations. Uh, next up was reread a favorite. So I I don't know what, what I'm gonna do here. I'm, I'll have to keep you posted. This will be a surprise. Um, and obviously it'll be very uh, specific for you based on what you've read and what you'd like. So rereading a, a favorite female author. And then uh, mystery. So we already talked about all the things, all the great mysteries that are out there by, by women. So that is it, I hope, um, through sharing what uh, my, I plan to read, hope to read, and recommendations that I've inspired you to, to do the challenge as well. Sorry for the long video, but hopefully you've made it through. Uh, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing what you come up with and your posts and everything on, on Instagram and Twitter. And um, if you are a booktuber, I can't wait to, to follow the tag to see what comes up. Happy uh, in advance. Happy birthday, Reading Women podcasts. They also have a Patreon all included at the bottom because I think they're doing amazing things. So that's it. Thanks. Bye.